The Quiet Warrior Show, where we help top leaders find their pathway to incredible success and a lifetime of happiness. Here is your host, Tom Dutta, The Quiet Warrior. Well, welcome to The Quiet Warrior Show. My name is Tom Dutta, and I am The Quiet Warrior, and I'm super excited to have on my show today Mr. Kim Hinkson. Hey, Kim, welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's glad to have you here. You know, it's really funny because when I interview guests, I usually say, where are you calling from? And I think you're sitting under a tree somewhere. <laughs> so it's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm, hiding, I'm hiding downtown. I'm trying to be incognito downtown Vancouver. That's beautiful. Well, what a great day to be doing it. So, you know, Kim, my show is all about bringing on leaders and they tell their authentic stories. So why don't we just start by turning it to you? Tell us a bit about yourself. Sure. One of my favorite subjects. Yes. The, um, <laughs> so I, I started actually back, I grew up in Regina, and um, which is a place that I still hold dear and I still have lots of good friends there and connections. But uh, I grew up in a three-generation hotel business. And uh, so that, that was, you know, clearly a family business and started with my grandfather, my father, and, and then myself. And, um, and so that, that's what I was doing up until I moved to Vancouver with my family about 30 years ago. Yes. Awesome. Well, that's great, Kim. And, and, and so, you know, the people that I have on my show, I like to say tongue in cheek that, you know, there's no egos. They check them at the door. So I'm going to build you up and, and, talk, and brag about you a little bit. From what I know about your background, it's fascinating. Uh, you know, you, you were, you're president and founder of a company called Ocean West Financial Group, 14 years now or so here in Vancouver. You know, you mentioned your family hotel business for about a decade or so, and we'll get into that backstory. But one thing that fascinates me is you've done some really creative things. You're the author of a book called Spilling the Beans, What Every Entrepreneur Needs to Know About Life Insurance. And then you took this turn, and I started noticing you on social media, getting into this abstract uh, passion of yours, which I'm not going to spoil the thunder here. And so you've got a lot to say in your story. So let's get into that. You and I both talked about the hero's journey narrative, which is really the narrative of leaders talking about their backstory. It's not just about the, how great the success is, but how did you get there? What were some of the ups and downs and how did you answer that call to do something meaningful with your life as it is today? So why don't you take us back, Kim, and just start, start us out in your story? Yeah, well, I think every good, you know, every good success story around entrepreneurs starts with, uh, you know, some form of failure. Yeah. And, uh, and whether they experience failure at the outset or certainly there's been failure along the way, which is the recipe for success. And, um, and so when I, when I came from Regina to Vancouver, it was on the heels of uh, business failure because our hotel uh, at the time did fail. And uh, fortunately, my father, who then went into real estate in Saskatchewan, he he did well, um, and they live in BC now. And for me, it was really a huge opportunity and a blessing in disguise because I came out here. I wanted to go into real estate. The market was crazy post expo at that time. Yeah, and I didn't. So that made me nervous. And I had a young family that I needed to support. And, um, and they weren't moving out here until, you know, I was ready, you know, to, uh, to support them property here. We still had a, a home in Regina and so on. So I started, you know, going around to companies that I thought I'd like to work for, not necessarily that we're posting positions because, you know, you've got to have a bit of an attitude. Yeah. And, um, and so then I went to, um, I ended up joining North American Life. Uh, it would have been easy to sell computer systems to hotels uh, because we had acquired the system ourselves. I got along great with the owner of that company, yeah. but that was too easy. And I was really challenged by the financial industry. So that's what I chose. And I remember meeting uh, so that it was the manager of the North American office that recruited me and I didn't meet my sales manager till the last meeting. Yeah. And uh, so Dick came in. And uh, we chatted a bit, and he said, so, what do you expect to make in your first year? Now, this is 30 years ago, right? 
Yeah. And I said, it's over $100,000. And he looked at me and he goes, yeah, right. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I just made my decision. I am joining North American Life. I am joining the financial industry. And you are more than a, clearly more than just, you know, you are a dick. <laughs> Never mind having the name Dick. So I, I so then I, I, he became my uh, my focus initially in terms of proving him wrong, and uh, so either he knew me really well and and understood you know what buttons to push or or had no clue. Well, actually, he was gone within a year, and I I did have you know fairly immediate success cold calling. Yeah, and because um, I had no idea where I was calling, I didn't know where Delta was, Richmond. I had no natural um, market here, so I was I was on the phone a lot, and um, and so that's what gave rise to my success, and then it went from there. Well, that's amazing. So we'll let you catch your breath for a minute. I mean, what I heard you say is, I mean, this this whole concept of failure. All successful leaders and entrepreneurs have a backstory like that. And then there you are leaving your family, traveling across the country, getting into an, an industry, as you said, that was, you know, challenging. And, and that takes a lot of courage. And while well, you started your, your company after getting into life insurance. And so I want to keep going with this because they say, Kim, that along the way to success, failure is, is also rooted in business, but it's also rooted in us. And there's usually something driving us, and, and sometimes deep inside we have demons or gremlins that trip us up. Uh, and sometimes finding passion in our careers is hard. I have many CEOs who say, well, I don't have time to do something creative, or I'm always in the office. What I'm fascinated about, and I want you to get us into that, is you know, what, what, were, what were some of the biggest failures for you personally, and how did you turn that into empowerment to to move forward and then how did you get into this abstract painting because that's really where I want to take you with the the rest of the story because I think it's fascinating sure well there's so many failures that, that come to mind I'm not sure where to start because I've, I've never been afraid to venture out and push the envelope and I continue to do that on some level uh, irrespective of my age and and so uh, failure for me is simply uh, represented as an obstacle and a challenge for me to deal with effectively. So find a way around it or through it or, you know, whatever, whatever it takes. I'll, uh, I'm, I'm very open to, I think one of the things that's helped me is I'm very open to mentoring and coaching. Yeah. And, um, and so I, I do reach out. I, I do have a, a, a small circle of people that I do rely on for that purpose. So yeah. I am getting fairly regular coaching. And, um, and of course, that, that mirrors, you know, uh, your upside and downside as well. So, I mean, there's no reason for, for me not to be clear on what's not working and what is working. So I try and, you know, I try and be very present. And, um, keep things transparent and be very clear about, uh, about my downside in particular. Well, I think that's brilliant. I, I just, you know, I just wrote something on social media this morning and I titled it, I fail, we fail. And there's a direct correlation from CEOs, what we call blind spots or limitations to per poor performance or failure in their businesses. And yet many CEOs aren't like you. I'm honored to hear what you said. I admire that, Kim, that, you know, it's lonely at the top, but they don't want to have coaching or mentoring. They don't want to go deep in the rabbit hole, you know, to find out, you know, the truth about themselves. So at Ocean West, you've had about 14 years of a run. And, you know, I can imagine in most businesses, the line of success isn't straight up. So tell us a little bit about, you know, the, the challenges or the successes there if you want, but but then I want to know how come you've gotten into this incredible abstract painting. I, I saw you on Instagram. I saw some videos of you basically kneeling over a, a platform or a canvas, throwing paint on it, rinsing it off. I've seen your gallery and I'm just blown away at how brilliant some of your work is. And I think this is one of the biggest learnings that we can get from you on the show, Kim, is how, when did you decide and why to do that? Because obviously it's a gift you have. And uh, and why now? So back to you. Okay, great. Well, my failures in life and my failures in business and and my failures in my 
art routine and my how I conduct myself with my artistry are are all there's there's a strong connection and a correlate. So um, maybe we can just go right to the art because I I constantly am failing uh, with my art uh, at different points. So I'll either you know set it aside. If I'm not happy with uh, the direction that it's going, I'll put it away. I've even taken a couple of pieces when, when the paint's still wet and slapped them together and said, okay, you guys figure it out and gone back to them two weeks later uh, and ripped them apart and, and found out they actually uh, resolved the problem between yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, and some, some incredible images resulted that I further developed. Um, so I will, um, yeah, I mean, in, in, with my art, I mean, it's, it's, and I think artists generally would agree that um, you're, you're continuing to fail in order to succeed. So your, your work never, what you create is never a totally seamless process. And so I, I believe strongly that how I overcome the obstacles there is represents me really well in all aspects of my life. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I, I I really am inspired by what you said there, Kim. There's so many lessons in 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 leadership in that particular part of the story. I just want to share something with you and maybe get your thoughts on it as we continue. And that is that there's real science now. You can find this on YouTube that says that the word passion uh, that people actually most people don't follow their passion, and the reason why is because they're afraid of it. Uh, first of all, if I decide to paint, it's maybe not going to pay the bills and feed the family. If I decide to be a chef, it's it's maybe not going to give me the retirement plan. And so a lot of people discover their passion and they don't follow it. The other part of that is in developing relationships, and I do a lot of work in this area of coaching executives, is they say passion when it's infused in relationships with our wives and our spouses or even in our businesses, the relationships in those two things get better because we show up happier we show up with that passion and yet there's so many people who don't so my question to you is you started you know I was looking back at your timeline you really started into this art in a big way getting your gallery up about four years ago but why why then and sometimes back in life and I know this from my own experience and many parents I meet we have dream stealers sometimes that take away our passion people will say yeah you're never going to be good at that you know, and we hardwire that in our thinking. And then at some point in life, it comes back to us as our dream and we unlock it. There's something maybe not so good that happens at that point in time, but we find a way to say, you know what? I was born with that gift of being an abstract painter and I going to take something and do with it to make people's lives better. So give us your thoughts on some of that. Okay, sure. Uh, well, if, if someone told me that uh, they thought I should go and paint about four years ago, I probably would have looked at them and told them to go drop dead um, <laughs> and, not sure what they, and not sure what they meant by it. So uh, when I was flying back, it was actually three and a half years ago to be, to be even more accurate, but yeah. I was flying back from Toronto and there was no movies on new releases I wanted to watch. So I went to the classics and a movie I'd seen when it first came out years before with Ed Harris called Pollock. Yep. Uh, which uh, in which he played the role of Jackson Pollock, foremost abstract artist probably ever to live. Um, so I started watching it again because I'd really enjoyed the story and, and like Ed Harris. And halfway through that movie, I was so pumped yeah. that I could barely sit still. And two things inspired me. One was the physical dimensions of his canvases, which were physically demanding, and I like sport. So I liked that, saw that as therapeutic. And then his style of artistry was just so crazy. You know, that that appealed to me as well. So I said to my assistant the next day, see if you can find me a gallery where they'll shut it down on a Friday afternoon, tell me what to bring, and just leave me alone. And uh, and of course, that was for fear I was going to fail miserably. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I she found the gallery in East Vancouver. Two women that, that owned it. They wanted to meet me to make sure I wasn't some kook. So I <laughs> met them, and uh, and then they told me what to bring. So I showed up on a Friday afternoon, 
the only thing they didn't tell me that was kind of key to the process was to bring a canvas. So I had no canvas. They didn't have one for me. So they had a roll of a huge roll of brown paper. Yeah. And uh, they cut it to the dimension that I thought I'd like to work on, which was rather large, maybe eight feet by six feet sort of thing. And, um, and so I started, they showed me how to mix some of the paint and then left me alone. And after about five hours, I was exhausted. And, uh, so I went home cause I had to let it dry. My wife said, well, how, how'd you do? And I showed her a picture and she started to cry and gave me a hug and said, thanks for not embarrassing me. So for <laughs> me, that was a green light. So that was a license to move forward. <laughs> I love so, it. Uh, that so is, that's that, how that I launched itself, my art career. That in itself could be another interview, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. So that, then, uh, so then because I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the entrepreneur that I am, I cannot invest a lot of time into something if, if there's not a commercial aspect to it. So I did hire a branding team uh, that supported me and helped me take the art to a business platform. And it was only about six months ago that we initiated or launched the new website and, and really launched the, the art as a genuine business. And so now I've got pieces at galleries really on a fairly global basis. I've got pieces in Europe. I've got pieces in Santa Fe, pieces in on El Paseo in a gallery in Palm Desert. And um, I have my studio here. And I'm just looking for a physical gallery in Vancouver that could work. And I've actually, because I like, I like that close, you know, that close in circle of, people to engage with and learn from and um, and just be able to coach and mentor each other. I have my gallery is legitimate now in that I've got five artists and I've just I'm just adding the most recent one, Garrett Grieve from San Diego, who in his own time as an artist spanning 40 years because he's 70 years old now. Yeah. This guy, I painted with him last weekend in my garage in Palm Desert, and this guy is just so amazing. And he's a quintessential artist. He's he does it all. He's about five artists in one body. He he spans so many forms of art. And so anyway, so I'm really excited about welcoming him to my gallery. That's very cool. I mean, that's just awesome, Kim. I, you're sending me on so many uh, thoughts in my mind here, so many directions. Uh, one of the questions I want to ask you here is, you know, parents have a huge responsibility. I believe so do teachers that when children are young to nurture them and help them follow their dreams. I believe that we're all born golden and innocent and we have this passion in us. We have the gift. I don't believe that you just learned to paint five years ago, that you had that creativity in you. So what would you say, you're a father, I'm a father, what would you say to parents or people who influence our children when they have a dream? What would you tell them? Well, you know, based on on my experience, I would say, you know, expose them to as many things as possible. So there's always a huge, you know, emphasis on sport. Yeah. But, um, and in some families and some cultures, for sure, there is more exposure to to music, uh, through piano and singing and, and ballet and that sort of thing. So, but, but make sure it's, you're spanning the realm of art possibilities. That's yeah. what I would suggest. Let them, you know, let them get, let them get exposed to everything. Yeah, that, that's brilliant advice, Kim. And there's so many children who have grown up, unfortunately, have had, had have had people in their lives who have influenced them or stolen their dreams. So that is just awesome. Uh, what I wanted to do is just capture, read something I found on your website, and, and I, I love this. And I think this is a lesson in itself for the CEOs who are listening in here. And it says, my art is the extension of my in- inventiveness, which is the cornerstone of the specialized financial structures we bring to market. And then further, I saw something that said, come to, come to my office, it's my gallery, and we can meet up. I, I think it's just a brilliant way that you've infused your art with your own business. And that really is what many business owners or CEOs fail to figure out. 
number one, how do I find the time to do my passion and follow it? Number two, how do I bring it into my business, not just my life? So you've done a great job with that. So as we wrap up, Kim, I just wanted to honor you with four, uh, several leadership words. I've written these down. They're not scripted as you're speaking. Uh, number one, you are inspiration, man. That's unbelievable what you've done. Two, you're cre- you are creativity. Three, your courage, the courage to you know, go down a path which maybe others wouldn't. And four, <laughs> you're a warrior. You've got power in you. You push through obstacles. And I'm inspired and, you know, I'm, and proud of what you've done. And I know there'll be many lessons learned from people. And just so you know, Kim, this show will be a legacy for you. It, it plays across internet channels. And you know, every young person listening to Growing Up, I hope, will say, geez, if Kim did that, man, I can follow my dream. So Let's turn it back to you for the last word. Tell us where we can, websites or whatever you want to say, where we can see your art and connect to your body of work. Well, GK, GK uh, Hinkson Art Gallery is the, uh, is the name of the gallery. Now we're just changing that to GKH Art Gallery Yeah. and taking my name out of it for, because we've got uh, so many other artists now that are part of it. And, um, and then the only other thing that I, I would say, and then I'm on Instagram, so uh, just GK Hinkson would be yeah. uh, easy to find me there or Twitter. And um, the only other thing that, that I'll say is that the art is opening so many doors and other possibilities. It's, ex- it's so exciting. And I'm starting a new men's clothing line, for example, and starting with uh, men's dress socks. We just nailed down the company in London, England, who have been making them for 120 years that are up the but they'll actually be making them sock. So I'm excited about that. So that'll be one of the next things that, you know, that's coming to market. That's awesome. But, but art, art and the creativity associated with it, just uh, I've, I've got, there's, there's a whole new world, you know, that I've been exposed to. That's exciting. That's amazing, Kim. Congratulations on the, the clothing line. And uh, we'll definitely look into that and try to get a hold of some of that. So that's all for for this episode. We'll have you back in the future, Kim, I'm sure. So everybody, find that true passion. You've just heard an example of the brilliant leader and artist. Find that true passion and you know, live life with purpose. Live the life that you deserve and desire. Thank you for listening to The Quiet Warrior Show. Create is a motive-based leadership development firm. www.create.ca 